we're interrupting the flow of um, the actual presentation itself. So one, one of the ways um, in which Oracle themselves acknowledge um, that Oracle label security could be bypassed would be if a user could arbitrarily load a random, well, not necessarily random, uh, a random, a bad DLL into the address space of the Oracle process. A DLL is a dynamic link library. It's like a shared object um, on, on Unix systems and so on. Now, if an attacker can do that and load their own code into the uh, address space of the Oracle process, then they can obviously start doing things like bypassing Oracle label security. And that's specifically mentioned in, in their OLS documents. Now, um, because um, loading a library is, is so dangerous, not even for Oracle label security, Oracle actually disallow even the sys user from loading a library into the address space of the Oracle process. But by using this Java hack that we already spoke about, this permissions hack, we can actually bypass all that stuff, load a library into the address space. So let's do that. Uh, so there's a library here called MyDLL. Uh, oh, mylib, it's called, sorry, mylib.dll. So we're going to load this library. The source for it is quite simple. Um, type uh, mylib.c. So that's the code. Um, all we do is create a, uh, a file called Oracle uh, OLS lib test. That's probably uh, cd um, app, cd david. Hopefully it doesn't exist. Uh, whilst that's going on, I'm going to load the library. OK. Now, remember, Gremlin has awarded themselves all the privileges under the sun. So things like create procedure, they now have. So what he's going to do is create a, um, some Java source named my load lib test that basically loads a library, takes an arbitrary name and loads a library, loads that library. So here goes Let me go with that. So we've just created that um, Java. We're now going to pass that to uh, give ourselves, sorry, the um, load library permissions. So again, we've used the um, DBMS JVM export permissions uh, package to import um, the uh, runtime permission load library on any library we want. See that dot star at the end? Uh, that basically says we can load any library we want now. And we use our good old friend Java test funk all to do that. Now what this does basically is takes the name of a method and it uh, takes the name of a class, its method to execute, uh, but again, it has to be um, of a set type, and then uh, passes it any parameter. And the parameter we're passing it here is uh, mylib.dll. But remember, we have to do dot, 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 and uh, dot, dot, slash, dot, dot, slash, to, because it will look in the current working directory, which is uh, somewhere in here. Um, CD product CD. Mm, uh, CDDB2. I think this is going to be the, um, the somewhere in here is the current working directory. So using the dot dot, basically, that's going to allow us to load the library from a different part of the file system. So if we start capturing this, here, this tool here is process monitor. It shows what's going on in the background. It's just a DLL I've created. Um, you know, my attack, basically, I would create the DLL and upload that uh, in onto the server um, using this Java hack, basically, to exp you know, load it into a table, export it at, from, at, from a, as, a, as a, load it into a table as a blob, export that to the file system. So I've now got a file called my DL, uh, mylib.dll, which is, contains my Trojan nefarious code, which I'm then going to load into the address space. And that, uh, the DLL main function, where are we? Um, CD backslash type um, my lib 
Dot C, or as it does basically, the, this DLL main function here, the code it's going to execute when it loads into Oracle is create a file called Oracle OLS libtest, uh, close it, and then, but if I wanted to do something really nefarious in there, I could, you know, but it's not nefarious, but it's just for demo purposes. Um, so, yeah, so if I was wanting to do a bypass OLS with this, I would basically write code to bypass OLS and put it in here, in the DLL main function. So if I hit enter, and we go back here, we can see Oracle has loaded the library into, this is my lib, for those that can't read at the back, that says my lib.dll on the root of the C drive. So it's loaded the library, and when a process loads a new library, it executes the DLL main function, so any code which is in there will execute. So now that um, file should exist, and there it is, okay? So we, we've seen that we've loaded um, arbitrary code into machine code into the address space. Uh, now we've done that, we not only own all the data, we own everything we can bypass, everything, do anything we want, basically, to the Oracle database server. Uh, back here. How are we doing for time? If you don't want to go to all that trouble, as I said, we could just use the SQL injection floor to bypass OLS and grant ourselves um, exempt policy access. So that way when we log on, because we've got this privilege, um, OLS policies will not apply to us. Same with uh, virtual private databases, VPDs. Um, we can basically get all the data we want. So if, we're, if we are cleared, say, for access to secret data um, in a, a, an OLS policy table, we can now get access to top secret and everything. All media access, uh, not media access, all mandatory access control is, is, is gone. Um, this DBMS Java function is really useful when it comes to auxiliary inject functions. Now, quickly explain what that is. If you have, a, say, an arbitrary SQL injection flaw on, in Oracle, sometimes um, it's difficult to execute arbitrary code. So what I mean by that is um, if we're in the middle of a select statement, let's say there's a, uh, a SQL injection flaw in a procedure owned by Sys that does an arbitrary select on some table, um, we can't just, like in, say, SQL Server, go semicolon, grant DBA to whoever and do this. You know, it, you can't batch statements and stuff. So sometimes, um, if you're limited by the actual floor itself, you need to inject uh, an auxiliary helper function, essentially, that allows us to do what we want, you know? So in this case, we would say grant DBA to public and, and, and so on. But we inject that. See that vuln proc? Um, that's, you know, the vulnerable procedure, you know, it's obviously fake, it doesn't exist on the system in, real, in, in the real world, just for demonstration purposes. Um, and that's because f SQL injection problems are so few and far between on 11G, I had to make my own one up. It was quicker to do that than, than find one. 10G release one or two, it would have been quicker finding a new one than writing a vulnerable procedure, funny enough, uh, which is quite ironic. Um, and so what we can do there is use this set output to SQL, which is a different uh, function. Uh, this does not execute as sys, but because we're execute, uh, ex injecting it into a sys-owned procedure, it will then uh, assume their privileges and execute um, as sys, therefore. So once we've set it up, we then uh, run something like um, the or Oracle Aurora util test class, and the, you know, the, the SQL will then execute. If, however, we were injecting this via a web-based attack, we need to uh, concatenate the two and put the attack in one single request, simply because the session may be torn down between two web requests and our session state and everything will change. So basically, all we do is embed um, our uh, output to SQL statement inside the run uh, Java statement. So this executes first sets up our attack, then when this one executes, you know, an output is, is generated to, to um, system.out or system.error, uh, then this, the, the, the SQL is triggered and, and, and so on. So uh, just to show you, this can be used as a, DBMS Java can be used as a great auxiliary inject function um, and even used over the web as well. Um, so, Preventing attacks. 
Clearly, the easiest method to um, stop people from exploiting this is revoke public permission.